Kristaps Porzingis has been a force to be reckoned with with this Boston Celtics team, and he's been that main piece to be a game changer to help the Celtics get over the hump and push for this championship. We'll be exploring how impactful Kristaps Porzingis has been this season and how dominant he has been for the Boston Celtics as a whole. We'll also be diving into Al Horford, looking at his role as it's diminished a little bit, bringing in Kristaps Porzingis, but exploring how much of the, how much necessary out Horford is needed to, as a veteran for this Celtics team and we'll also be diving into that backup center position diving in looking at Luke Cornett versus Namus Keita who is that true guy all of that and more on this episode of Celtics Digest I'm Bruce Velez before we dive into any Celtics content though if you guys are not subscribed and part of the 79% of our viewers who have not hit that subscribe button and join the family, what are you guys doing? If you guys want to make sure you stay up to date on daily Boston Celtics content, hit that subscribe button. We know you won't regret it. But let's dive into the news at hand today. Make sure to grab a snack as this is going to be a jam-packed episode today as we dive in. Looking firstly at Kristaps Porzingis is unstoppable. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, trading Marcus Smart for Kristaps Porzingis was a heartache for most Celtics fans, including myself. But after what we've seen Kristaps Porzingis do for the Celtics team, especially on Christmas Day versus the Los Angeles Lakers, coming back from that injury of the calf where he was resting it, he has been a force for this Celtics team and truly a great dominant force. We want to look at Kristaps Porzingis. We can look at this tweet from Chris Forsberg saying that Kristaps Porzingis is now up to a league best 1.44 points per play on all post-ups, the best in the NBA. He's also shooting 71.4% on all post-ups and generates free throws on 32% of his post-up chances. Just a ridiculous luxury for the Celtics to be able to dump in and let him go to work. We saw Kristaps Porzingis absolutely dominate in this game versus the Los Angeles Lakers. In the first quarter, you saw the Celtics taking a lot of shots, shooting the ball at a really decent clip. The second and third quarter, a little bit of a slowdown there, but working the ball into Kristaps Porzingis in that post and having him be a dominant force. Kristaps Porzingis, we've seen him have two different utilizations on the Celtics offense. Him working down low in the post and being an absolute behemoth in down low, scoring on every post basket. Or we've seen him stretch up to the three-point line and be four for five from three, an absolute cash man and those are the two things that he's going to do to diversify his offense on a daily night some nights he'll be working in the post some nights he'll be stretching out the floor whatever's working for his offensive game is the best for the boston celtics and with the celtics being a predominantly three ball team as we've seen throughout the season with guys like Derek white drew holiday jason tatum firing up those three pointers if chris top sportsingus can be that true menace in the post that's what the Celtics need. And we have a quote here from Jason Tatum from a tweet from Jared Weiss on Kristaps Porzingis saying, we haven't had a low post presence like this since I've been on the Celtics and it creates so many problems. Are you going to switch us? Are you going to drop in? I'm just happy to be on this side of it. And I am too, Jason Tatum. I'm excited to be a Celtics fan and get to see Kristaps Porzingis do this for the Boston Celtics. Like we just mentioned, Celtics are a big three-point shooting team. So Kristaps Porzingis can be an efficient three-point shooter for the Boston Celtics, but if the Celtics threes are raining down and he's not hitting them, he can be a dominant post presence, switch up that offense, make the teams have to put in a different lineup to guard Kristaps Porzingis, and it just makes all havoc for the opposing defense. Very excited to see Kristaps Porzingis back and healthy for this Celtics team, and I want to know your guys' opinions down in the comments below. Where would you guys rank Kristaps Porzingis among the centers in the NBA? Obviously, we have some great centers in Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, if you want to count Anthony Davis as one as well. But I want to know your guys' true rankings of where Kristaps Porzingis falls in that center rating. I definitely think he is in the top five. But let's dive in and look at another Celtic in the front court who has been dominant, and that is Al Horford. Al Horford has been our veteran for the Celtics team. And bringing in guys like Drew Holiday and bringing in guys like Kristaps Porzingis made Al Horford take a bench role and had him sacrifice his starting lineup position. And we broke that down in, a, in a videos in the past, talking about how Jason Tatum and the boys had a nice meeting all together at the start of the season, deciding who was going to come off the bench. They all kind of came in agreement that Al would be the guy to do it. Al was the guy that said he would come off the bench for the Boston Celtics. And it's been very impactful for this Celtics team. We want to look at Al Horford's stats here for the Celtics this season. He's put up 7.5 points, 7.1 point total rebounds, and 2.8 assists with 46% off the shooting, 37% from three, and 100% from free throw in 25 games. Al Horford has been solid for the Celtics. If you guys know, 
beginning of the year al horford's numbers weren't the greatest on the shooting percentage but he has brought it up to, to those some better numbers we want to look at al horford's game log looking at the whole month of december you can see there are some games where he put up 20 points or at least plus 10 there are three instances where he did plus 10 points and those are big impactful games for the boston celtics with no Kristaps porzingis where he's needed to step up he's also helped out the celtics in the rebound category at least grabbing five rebounds in a contest with some nights having a double double at least or having 10 rebounds at least versus the knicks versus the Cavs, and versus the golden state warriors he had at least 10 rebounds also helping out in the assist and block category as well if you want to look at the whole month of december i believe there's only two games where he did not receive a single block and he's been helping out on the assist category. Al Horford has just truly represented this role as a backup big and has stepped up when Kristaps Porzingis needs it most when Kristaps Porzingis is out. If we want to look at Kristaps Porzingis' stats for the season, you can see obviously he's having a better season now, Horford getting more minutes, putting up 19.6 points, 7.1 total rebounds, and 1.7 assists off of 53% shooting, 35% from the three, and around 82% from free throw, a little less on the three-point percentage, but he hasn't been that dominant from three-point percentage. At the start of the season, in the preseason, he was hitting a lot of threes, but as the season has been going on, Kristaps Porzingis has been a better point in the paint player for the Boston Celtics, and that is where I think he's the most effective. Playing alongside Al Horford as well, lets him be able to space out the floor, regardless of which one wants to, to stretch out the three, and Al Horford has done that tremendously for the Boston Celtics. And I'm very, very ecstatic to see Al Horford step up when his number is called on the bench, having big turnaround games for the Boston Celtics with no Kristaps Porzingis, nurturing that calf injury. And those are the things you want to see out of this Celtics team in this front court, is after all these trades that the Celtics have made to upgrade their front court, you want to see their guys actually helping them out and playing well, and Al Horford has done that tremendously let's dive into the last topic at hand today which discusses luke cornett or namus Keda. who would you guys like to see at the back of big and before i ask this question i already know that the comments are going to be flooded with the namus Keda comment and personally i would agree i think that namus Keda has kind of built him up self to a nice role here for the boston celtics but we'll be diving in and discussing this article here on Celtics blog, looking at Namus Keita versus Luke Cornett. We want to look at it. It says that head coach Joe Mazzulla declared shortly before the Celtics left for California on this West Coast trip that Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, and Luke Cornett would comprise the bench unit in Boston's nine-man rotation when healthy. Then Luke Cornett got hurt, and when he returned from his adductor strain in Los Angeles for Christmas Day, Versus the Lakers, he stayed on the bench and did not play, while Nemus Kata stood up for the first half stint at backup center. Now, you may be asking, why did that happen? If Brad, if Joe Mazzulla is going to say that um, Luke Cornett is our backup center, and that is because Nemus Kata absolutely balled out while Luke Cornett had his injury. If we want to look, Kata, who averaged 10 points and 10 rebounds per game against the Warriors, Kings, and Clippers on that road trip, and Horford combined to outscore opponents by 31 points per 100 possessions as a two-man big lineup. Even factoring in his, mi his minus 10 minutes against the Lakers and 50% shooting around the rim, Cater remains still at a plus 16.3 per 100 possessions through his first nine Celtics appearance. Cornette, by contrast, has worked up a plus 1.2 individual net rating through 17 games and a 3.4 playing next to Horford in 44 minutes. That difference alone likely changed minds inside the Celtics coaching staff, alongside Kata's astonishing 21.8 offensive rebound percentage that would edge out Mitchell Robinson for a top mark in the league if he qualified. So we love to see that from guys of Namus Kata. Going out and getting the offensive rebounds, obviously Namus Kata put up two double-doubles with Luke Cornett being out, and that is very impactful. Namus Keita does have to touch up his finishing around the rim like the article mentioned. He shot less than 50% from the rim against the Lakers and versus the Los Angeles Clippers. He easily could have had a 20-point game in him if he actually hit some shots around the rim. That is the main piece he needs to work on and a little bit defensively not trying to foul. But Namus Keita is a great rim protector. He also brings a lot of offensive vertical verticality or versatility and verticality, sorry, that Robert Williams brought versus for the Boston Celtics. He's a great lob threat, and he can be a dynamic piece for this Celtics offense and defense if he is to get some reps in. The only problem with 
name is Keita, is he's on the G League and he's only qualified for 50 games to be on the Celtics roster. Therefore, if the Celtics want to keep Namus Keita, play him into the playoffs, they are going to have to look to extend him and bring him into a normal contract and bring him in as the last guy, the 15th guy on a deal. You want to keep looking at this article. Horford had a quote to say about Namus Keita saying, it seems to me the game comes easy to him, especially around the basket. He has a really good feel for finishing and rebounding and being there in the right place, right time. That's been the impressive part to me. He's a bigger guy and he can finish pretty well at the rim and that's the most impressive. Ultimately, we have seen some games where Namus Keita hasn't finished the greatest around the rim, but he has been solid catching those lobs and being a great offensive piece when they do throw the ball up to him or getting, you know, two or three offensive rebounds and putting up some putbacks, even if they're, they're not most successful shots for the Boston Celtics. I think Namus Keita needs a little bit more work throughout the season, and I think the Boston Celtics are going to give him that work where he will compete against Luke Cornett for these backup minutes, and we'll see tonight versus the Detroit Pistons, who ultimately gets the backup center job, will it be Luke Cornett or will it be at name is Keita? Personally, I think Keita will fight for the job, and as we saw, the 21% offensive rebound percentage, I think definitely boosts him up to get a little bit more of a look and get him some more playing time over Luke Cornett in the next couple of games to see how well the name is Keita brings the energy and offense to this team. We've seen guys like Lamar Stevens and O'Shea Brissett bring a lot of energy to the Celtics team, but a guy like Namus Keita brings a ton of energy and offensive rebounding, and I think he fits this mold of the Celtics team. Obviously, the Celtics have that 6.2 TPE from Grant Williams, so they could look to add some more guys in the front court as well, maybe add another wing to this lineup. But I think their guards are set, their wings are set in Hauser, Tatum, and Brown. And then when we look at the big men, we got Kristaps Porzingis and Big Al who are playing good. We need that third big. Will it be a guy from the TPE? Will a guy like Keita or Cornet step up for the Celtics team? I personally think Keita will edge out Cornette, get that backup big spot, and I think still think Cornette will be on this team as the third big and hold out a still valuable roster spot. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who do you guys realistically want, Keita or Cornette? I love your guys' comments and reading them, and they bring joy to my day. Thank you guys so much for enjoying this episode of Celtics Digest. If you guys are at this point in the video and still aren't subscribed, what are you guys doing? We know you enjoy the content. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and join the family. We'd greatly appreciate it. I'm Bruce Velez. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.